Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation have done the seemingly impossible. They've released a new version of the Raspberry Pi Zero called the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and it increases the performance by up to five times, and yet they haven't changed the board size. Absolutely amazing. If you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so I'm going to cover lots, lots of different things about the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero 2 in this video. Some of it is going to be history, some of it's going to be background, which means you may want to jump over parts. So therefore, there is a chapter list in the description below. And if Google has done its job right, you should have them also here on the video. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, so for those who don't know what the Raspberry Pi is, it is a single board computer aimed at hobbyists, enthusiasts, and makers. And the great thing about it is that you get a full uh, functioning computer. That means you've got a, a multi-core processor on it. You've got RAM, you've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, but also as well as all that stuff, you've also got access to what's called the GPIO pins, the general input output pins, which means you then have access to hardware, to sensors, to motors, to controllers, to wireless things, to displays, LEDs. You can control all kinds of hardware and therefore build some really quite interesting projects. Now, traditional Raspberry Pi single board computers are kind of large credit card size devices. We've had the Raspberry Pi 1, the 2, the 3, and now the 4. And the 4 is quite an amazing device with a quad-core Cortex-A72 processor, up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, USB, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, there's even access to the PCI Express bus under certain versions of it. You've got the Pi 400, the kind of the same thing built in with the keyboard. I've got videos about all these things here on this channel. But at that high end, I mean, you can be paying, you know, $80, $90 for a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, way down at the other end, the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Raspberry Pi Zero back in 2015. And it's much, much smaller than the traditional Raspberry Pi boards. In fact, it's really, really quite amazing that they're able to pack in so much on such a small board. Now, the Raspberry Pi Zero, if I'm being honest, is my preferred, my absolute favorite board because of its price and yet its capabilities. And you can literally just plug one into a USB charger, hang it on a wall, stick it on the on a table somewhere, and over the Wi-Fi, you've got access to a full Linux computer with desktop and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all those GPIO pins, and, it, and it's just $5 uh, for the cheapest one, and it's $10 for the one with the built-in Wi-Fi and everything. So absolutely amazing. I've got too many of them. Let's just put it like that. I've got too many. Now, I actually spoke to uh, Ebden Upton, that's the founder of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, back in 2020 at the ARM Dev Summit, and I asked him, did you have any plans for the Raspberry Pi Zero? And he said, no, not at the moment, because the biggest problem with the Raspberry Pi Zero is it's such a, such a small board that it's very hard to get the RAM and the processor and all the Wi-Fi and the GPIO pins and the HDMI and the USB, you know, all on that tiny, tiny board. Well, obviously they were working on something because they brought out now the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. And it all comes down to the packaging, how they managed to get the RAM and that quad-core processor in that little package. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. So now turning our attentions to the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W itself. Let's look, first look at the name, Raspberry Pi of another zero because it is a Raspberry Pi Zero, so it's that much smaller board. Two, because it's the second uh, generation. And the W means it's got wireless connectivity built into it. Now there's no mention whether they're gonna release ever a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 without the W, which could be a cheaper version without those extra components on it. Uh, no news, wouldn't surprise me if they did at some point in the future. Let's take a quick look at the specs. Basically, it has the same system on a chip as the Raspberry Pi 3, but it's slightly lower clock speed at one gigahertz. And the magic here is all in the packaging, which as I said, we'll talk about in a minute. So that Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 have a quad core 64 bit ARM Cortex A53 processor, in this case, clocked at one gigahertz. And you have 512 megabytes of LPDDR2 uh, RAM in that same package. You've got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 4. You've got Bluetooth 4.2, including Bluetooth Low Energy. You've got a USB 2.0 interface. Then, of course, there are those GPIO pins, which are exactly compatible with all the other Raspberry Pi devices, which means you can use any kind of hats, hardware uh, attachments on top that you can kind of use uh, on the Raspberry Pi you can use on here. There's a micro SD card slot, mini 
HDMI port, and then of course you've got a camera connector. There are some solder points for a composite video, and because of the way the Raspberry Pi works, because of that GPU you've got inside of it, as with the other Raspberry Pis, you do actually have uh, encode and decode for H.264 hardware accelerated, so that's really good. And then if it was ever necessary, OpenGL ES 1.1 and 2.2, 2.0, sorry, graphics. So while all that's fantastic, let's just point out a few of the negative points half a gigabyte of ram that's the point here and if you want more than one half a gigabyte go for one gigabyte in a raspberry pi 3 and if you need more than one gigabyte then go and get a raspberry pi 4 two gigabytes four gigabytes eight gigabyte versions available however for that tiny tiny package that is the raspberry pi zero two i think half a gigabyte is great and obviously the best way to use it is without the desktop running maybe you want the desktop running for some kind of initial configuration but then really if you're putting it in some kind of project in a robot in a temperature monitoring a smart home stuff displays whatever you're doing it'd be good running it without the uh, desktop however having said that when i did run it with the desktop it's kind of a side note it was only using about 150 uh, 200 megabytes of that 512 RAM with no applications running. So it's not actually that much of a hog, a memory hog, when you do have the desktop running. And the other thing to mention about the Raspberry Pi Zeros in general is it's got all the tiny connectors on it. So the HDMI port is not a full size one. So you have to have an adapter to go from that to a normal HDMI cable. And in fact, most of the places that sell Raspberry Pi uh, boards, Raspberry Pi Zero boards will sell you kind of little conversion kits that include the adapter for the HDMI and the same for the uh, USB. It's not a full size USB port like you'd get on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's a mini one and you, again you have to have an adapter if you want to plug in a, a flash drive or a hard drive or a webcam or something you're going to have to use adapter. So adapters really are the, the big thing. Even a keyboard and mouse you're going to need an adapter and a little hub to get that plugged into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now that's the negative point but again once you have it up and running and you are using it in a project or as I often do just leave it running uh, here in my office so that I can connect to it over the network and then start using a, a Linux computer instantaneously of course you don't need the mouse keyboard and the HDMI connected but you will need them for configuration. Now as I said we talk about that package now with the original Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi uh, 0 you've basically got this thing which is called a package on a package pop what that basically means you can get the system on a chip and it's kind of a the whole package with the little ball bearings the little ball solder points that is how it's connected to the the motherboard and then on top of that you can actually place some sd ram as long as the processor is small enough to fit between the the ball points between those legs that connect it to the um to the motherboard here's a little diagram to help us understand that so here you can see it says processor dram you know, and then the substrate and the solder balls there for the connection. But the point to notice here is the balls that are underneath the DRAM, they sit on top of the ones that go into the processor. So really, it's actually two physical packages that are one on top of each other. And then, of course, it's all joined together and uh, soldered together and everything. But really, you're just looking at two things, one sitting on top of the other. So I said the key there is that the processor needs to be able to fit in the gap between all those connecting balls that are part of the SD RAM. Now that was fine for an ARM v6 single core uh, processor, which is what you get in the Pi 1, what you get in the Raspberry Pi 0. However, as soon as you move up to a Cortex-A7 or a Cortex-A53, so 32-bit and then 64-bit, that processor becomes too big and no longer fits in there. And that's why the Raspberry Pi 0 was using that ARM v6 core if you want to know about ARM v6, ARM v7, ARM v8, ARM v9, I've got loads of videos here on this channel about that, so do go and check them out. Now, once you've moved to the bigger processor, there's no longer the gap, so they have to choose a different solution. And that different solution is called a system in a package, or a SIP. So looking here at a diagram of a SIP, a system in a package, you can see it's no longer two rows of solder balls, two rows of connecting pins. It's actually just one, and it's all inside the same package and inside the package inside that you've got the ram and the processor and they can actually now sit on top of each other one doesn't have to sort of fit nestle into the bottom part of the other it can be bigger and they can go on top of each other and so the new processor that you find on the raspberry pi 02w is actually this combined package of the sd ram 
and the process together in that one physical package. And then that in itself is then connected to the motherboard. And that's absolutely brilliant. That's also why you have 512 megabytes of RAM and not one gigabyte or two gigabytes and so on. So let's talk about performance. Well, first of all, the most obvious thing is that the Raspberry Pi Zero had an ARM V6 single core processor in it. And now we're going up to a 32-bit one. And now we're going up to a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A53 processor running at one gigahertz. So just that in itself is just going to absolutely blow the performance uh, numbers out of the window. Now, what I've done is I've done some various testing, comparing different Raspberry Pis for their performance uh, using single-threaded calculations and multi-threaded calculations. I've done them using my thread test tool that's available on my GitHub repository if you want to try it out for yourself. And I've also used uh, the OpenSSL uh, package for creating, doing MD5 and, and SHA1 and cryptographic functions to see how well they perform. And that's kind of single-threaded as well. So single-threaded and multi-threaded. And let's have a look at what I found out. So on the left-hand side, we can see here at the very top, we've got the Pi 0 W. It's the original one. We've got the Pi 0 2 W. We've got the Pi 3 and the Pi 4. And all of these scores are relative to the speed of the Pi 0 W with its single core 32-bit ARM V6 core. So let's just start at the bottom. Let's look at the Pi 4, for example, using multi uh, threaded primes, for example, you can see, look at that, it's 9.5, almost 10 times faster than a Pi 0W. You can see that a Pi 3 is like eight times faster. And when we get to the new one, the Pi 02W, you can see it's over five times faster doing multi-threaded uh, prime functions, uh, finding prime numbers using my uh, test program, as I said, that's on my GitHub. So first of all, for just that increase in that process, you're getting five times the performance in a multi-threaded uh, environment. Absolutely amazing. And yet the price has only gone up by $5. So five times faster for $5 more. I don't think really that's, uh, that's a bad message, really, is it? And let's just look at some of the single core stuff. On my single threaded prime number finder, you can see that the Pi 02 is about 1.4 times faster than a Pi 0. Uh, and then the Pi 3 is about two times faster. Now, it's interesting because the Pi 02 and the Pi 3 have the same core. It's A53 quad core setup. But of course, the Pi 3 is clocked at a higher clock rate and therefore you can see the difference and of course when you get to the Pi 4 with a much much better Cortex A72 you're looking at 2.5 times performance and then looking at the uh, single threaded SHA1 uh, generation numbers again Pi 0 is our base there at 1 times you've got a uh, Pi 0 2 is 2.5 times more than 2.5 times faster 4 times faster for the Pi 3 and over 6 times faster for the Pi 4. So one thing is absolutely certain, the Pi uh, Zero 02 is phenomenal in terms of performance compared to the original uh, Pi Zero. And of course, it's up there with the Pi 3. So if that's the level of performance you're looking for, then the Pi uh, Zero 02 is a great bargain at only $15. But of course, with uh, performance, there's also the question of power. Power also means how much you know amps it's using, and so on, but also how much heat it's generating. So I did a bit of testing between the Pi 02 and the Pi 3 to see what the story was there. So basically, I've gone back to having two different workloads here, a single threaded one and a multiple threaded one. The Pi 02W in a single threaded test creating uh, SHA1 uh, uh, hashes will use just over 0.3 of an amp and when it's running using my multi-thread four threads on my uh, testing program then that goes up to about half an amp now you compare that to the pi 3 the pi 3 will use over 0.6 amps when using the single threaded uh, hash generator and it goes up to almost one amp 0.95 amp around there when it's doing multi-threaded prime. So you can see there's much more power being used by the Pi 3 than there is by the Pi 0W. And of course you'd expect that because of the difference in the clock speed. So uh, the clock speed is much, much lower on the Pi 0, higher on the uh, Pi 3. Now of course this is the question, this is how it works. Basically the Pi 3 can do the work in a shorter amount of time, but use more current to do that. 
The Pi Zero can use less current, but it takes longer to perform the task. So this is always the question of what engineers have to deal with when they're trying to make power efficient devices. You can either do something quickly and use lots of power, but then of course you come back down to zero very quickly because you finish the job, or you can use not quite so much power, but take longer to do it, which means it takes longer before you go back down to zero power usage again. Now, the great thing is that when you do the multiplications, it actually turns out the Pi uh, Zero Two is more efficient than the Pi Three. Even though it takes longer, the amount of energy it uses in total, including over that time frame, is fractionally less than the Pi Three. It's not much in it, but there is a little bit of, of a difference there. So if you wanted something that was more power efficient, then go with the uh, Pi Zero Two. Okay, let's quickly just talk about software. As with all the Pi boards, it runs by default uh, Raspberry Pi OS. It's the 32-bit version that's running at the moment. All my testing was done on the 32-bit version. Now, because it's only got 512 megabytes of RAM, there is a compelling argument for sticking with the 32-bit version. I didn't yet try a 64-bit version because the 64-bit version of Ubuntu that runs on the Pi 2, you, Pi Zero 2, you need to do some hacking. You need to install it on one board and then copy it over and then configure it. And so I didn't do it. Now, there are, the Ubuntu people are saying that there will be a 64-bit version coming fully supported very soon for the Pi Zero 2. When that comes, out, I will take a look and see if there's anything very interesting to say about it. If there is, then I certainly will make another video. But just to re-emphasize, it is a 64-bit processor. So if you are keen on running 64-bit uh, software, then there will be 64-bit versions of Linux available for it. And of course, you can compile native 64-bit apps for it. And finally, let's just talk about the price. As I've said, $15 in the USA. In Europe, you're looking around 15 pounds, 14 pounds in the UK, sort of 15 uh, euros, 14 euros, 13 euros in Europe, depending on where you buy it and, and then packaging for shipping and all that kind of stuff. But basically, if you stick to the US pricing, because it's quite interesting, $5 for the Pi Zero, $10 for the Pi Zero W, and $15 for the Pi Zero 2W. And I must say the Pi Zero 2W is now my favorite Raspberry Pi device because of that price and the performance and the form factor. I, you know, they're only gonna ship because of the you know problems with the chip shortage. They reckon they're gonna ship maybe 200,000 units this year and then maybe another 250,000 in the first half of next year. I mustn't be greedy, but I'm certainly gonna be getting hold of a few more of those. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains, and I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the newsletter, and I think you might enjoy it. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.